Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be featuring a team based all around the new legendary horse Pokemon, Glastria. So you can see the team on your screen right now, it is going to be the Glastria, the Dusclops, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Reggie, Aleki, another new Pokemon that we got introduced with the Crown Tundra and Landorus, the form with the Choice Scarf. So the basic premise of this team is kind of heavy trick room. We've got a very fast mode in the Landorus and Reggie Aleki if we need it. It, and the Regilecki can hit like a truck with our choice specs attached there and because it's got such a high base speed it doesn't really worry about um, getting outsped by too much in the format obviously and if they do go for the tailwind we've got the, the kind of anti trick room mode there to help us out we've got uh, Incineroar and Tapu Fini to kind of give us a nice base as well defensive base to slow the games down and things like that but we'll get into the details of the team as we play a couple of games as we normally do there will be a rental team at the end of the episode and there will be a Pogger Pace down in the description so without further ado, let's hop into it. And as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. If you do enjoy this sort of content, do consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of these episodes when they do go up because we've got a bunch of new teams to feature in Series 7. So we'll be churning them out on a continual basis. And like I mentioned in a previous episode, I'd love to hear what your new kind of combinations, new favorite Pokemon you've been using in the Series 7 format as well. So do leave those down below and I look forward to reading through those but we got a first opponent of the episode playing a team of Cinderace, Rillaboom, Gastrodon, Stack Attacker, Glastria and uh, Galarian Articuno so heavy trick room team uh, with a, a kind of a speed mode with the, the Rillaboom and the Cinderace kind of stuck on there so it's um, interesting to say the least I think Landorus with Intimidate oh, and Cineral is very good as well like the double Intimidate here is obviously very good um, Incinero is probably a little better because so it gives us a bit more of an immunity against the Articuno. Helps us out a bit more against Glastria as well, whereas Landorus really does struggle against that, that Pokemon. Um, okay, so I think we got Incinero. The thing is, they're probably going to go for... They're probably going to bring the Rillaboom out as a lead. Um, let's go Dusclops. Glastria and Tapu Fini. The only problem doing this is we struggle a little bit against the stack attacker. Where it's kind of nice to have the double intimidate, maybe, you know, but it would mean dropping Tapu Fini, which could be a little bit awkward. But um, let's go Landorus then. Okay. It's maybe always good to lead Landorus as well. I think just because, of, like, Fini can deal with the stack attacker pretty well. But I think just having the, the Earthquake. If we get ourselves into a nice position where we're not in a trick room, it could do a lot of work. So we will... F and Glastria can deal with pretty much most things on the team. The double Intimidate is going to be so important though, I think, to help support it in this match. I'm predominantly looking at my opponent's team, they're pretty physically based. Outside of the, the Articuno, maybe the Gastrodon. Um, okay, we're going to see Cinderace come out with... The Articuno. Now Articuno, Glaring Articuno does have Trick Room, so we need to be careful about it. Um, obviously we've procked that competitive ability as well. Uh, reversing our Trick Room, which would be bad. Um, now I think what we'll do is we have to, we have to probably fake out into the Articuno. But is it going to max? That's the question. I don't know. But if it maxes, it means it can't reverse our trick room. We definitely get our trick room set up, which is always going to be good for us. And then if it does max, it puts us in a great spot to get glass round to the field, brick break, weakness policy, and then just knock it out in one hit. So we don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, and with the Cinderace down to minus one as well, um, it's not going to be as threatening. It's still going to be hitting hard, of course. So you need to watch out for that. But we'll see what it does. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the Cinderace. It's going to max. Okay. And they're going to try and reverse our Trick Room, I think. So we may... Mm, what are they going to do? Max Knuckle? Incineroar? They're going to max Darkness, probably, the Dusclops to double into that slot to try and take us down, maybe. Which wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, but we've got ways to get around most things. Uh, so, yeah, Max Darkness, which is fine. Um, we'll take this pretty comfortably with Dusclops. Yeah. 
I mean, not pretty comfortably. We take it. We take it. <sighs> now we can't. The next turn, we could go for a Will O Wisp into. Thing is, we want to try and get rid of uh, Articuno because it's going to tr it's going to try and reverse the Trick Room. That's the problem. Whereas I don't think a Nightshade and a Flare Bliss is going to be enough to get it. Um. It's not the it's not the strongest on the uh, the physical side, so we might be able to do it. You know, we might like a nightshade and a flare blitz might be enough to get it. If it is, that's that's huge for us because okay, it's actually going to switch out. I was expecting it to stay in and try and reverse the trick room, but stacker coming in. Okay, hopefully we don't lose the dustclops here because then we lose a way to get the weakness policy onto um, the glass rare. But I mean, it's still not. It's not the worst. Okay. Well, we get some decent damage into Stack Attacker regardless, which is always going to be useful. Max Knuckle coming out, and uh, that will be into Incineroar. Um, but we do still have the option to burn the Cinderace if we want. Um, I don't want to sack Incineroar. I don't. I think we need to keep Incineroar around, to be honest, for later in this game. So it might not be worth sacking it. I think if we can switch it out now into probably Landorus is a good switch and go for Will O Wisp into the Cinderace. That's probably not a bad play. Um, and then we kind of keep that in check. Take away the boost from the. a max knuckle and then we've still the problem is the stack attack that could reverse the trick room here which wouldn't be ideal but it's just going for the rock slide going to try and flinch a dust clops but we do get the will o wisp which is perfect so that uh, cinderace is down to minus two now i think in the max darkness it might pick up the knockout still onto dust clops wouldn't be surprised if it does okay well, we, we, we just about take it. Okay, well, thing is, when we get Glastria on the field, we're not really going to have too many turns of Trick Room left, which makes it a little bit awkward for us. And if we had Pain Split here, which we don't really have the room for, because I felt like will o -Wisp was so, so important um, for us. Um, could switch into Glastria now. Uh, probably not, actually. I think probably switching back into Incineroar might be the play. And then... Uh, we could Nightshade. Nightshade the Stacker. Or Nightshade the Cinderace. Probably better to get the Stacker. The Stacker feels like more threatening here. And the Cinderace might switch out. Yeah. Okay, it's going to try and reset the drop at least. We've had already. And... Yeah, we're going to proc the competitive ability on this Articuno again, which is not so great. But we do put the um, the stack attacker down to minus one, I think, because it did get the the max knuckle boost, so it went back up to yeah. So neutral, I think it's neutral. Minus one, one of the two. Oh, dust clubs avoids. Okay, that's good for us. Uh, and then Cinero coming in, so we. Are able to take that we'll get another nightshade and is that the trick room ended now which isn't good because we've not really made the most of our trick room at all um ah oh, we really need to we need to stop that out of kuna doing anything I'm going to go for a fake out and I'm going to go for a nightshade into the Articuno to get damage onto it. So stack attack is not really too threatening. Okay, it's going to protect. We could have faked out, nightshaded. Articuno going to take down the Dusclops here, I think. That's what we're going to see. But we do have Landorus to come in this next turn. So we can do some stuff with Landorus at least. As we see Freezing Glare and this will be enough to take down Dusclops. 
And what we really need to do now is deal with Articuno with Landorus. We might be able to do with an Earth uh, Rock Slide. We're going to outspeed it with the Trick Room ending, which is good. And then if we can, if a Rock Slide does take down the Articuno, the worrying part is, does the Stack Attack have a Wide Guard? And it is like plus four now, which is super bad for us. So we need the Rock Slide to actually take it down. Um, we'll go for Flare Blitz and we'll go for Rock Slide. The other option is go max with Landorus and then just go max Rockfall. Which might, in all honesty, be the, be the better play here. And just go, yeah, I think I think we just Flare Blitz stacker and i think we do go max rock fall because we should add speed articuno with landorus unless it's like max speed which i don't expect it to be i think you've got to you probably don't you want it a bit middling speed so you can take advantage of the trick room as well as your tailwind um so i think we've probably got to take advantage this is the moment we're not going to really get the most out of glastrea here but We've kind of got ourselves into a situation with the competitive ability where it's if we leave it alone and we miss the knockout or whatever, then it's going to just get too much for us. So we need to we need to be dealing with it like post haste, pretty much uh, the max um, airstream as well should help us against uh, Cinderace once it comes onto the field. But we've got to remember that uh, Cinderace probably does have bounce. This should take it down, but whether or not. Uh, I mean, we depend on the chip that we take here. We should be able to stick around at least one turn longer with Incineroar. Yeah, I mean, the sand going to just chip us a bit, but it's fine. Cinderace is burnt as well, so I mean, that gives us a little bit of a plus here. Um, all right, Gastrodon. Okay. Hmm. That makes things a little bit trickier. Okay, well... I think we're potting shot out into the Gastrodon. Uh, the, yeah, we're potting shot out onto the Gastrodon. And we will go for... Uh, do we max Airstream it as well? Because then we'll be able to... Add, yeah, I think... Because I worry about... I do worry about the bounce on the Cinderace and us just wasting, yeah, a max move. Which is not really going to be super useful. Um, but with the bounce coming out, at least this way, we can not waste it and get a speed boost on our Landorus, which means we'll probably be able to get the Gastron if we can take an attack this next turn. But I mean, it's still, there's so much damage. There's so much damage. It's like star boosted flying and the parting shot should mean we can take an attack from Gastron onto Landorus. Um, and it means we've got Intimidate in the back as well. So, Glastria will make an appearance. It's not gonna be the big, kind of the big mon of this match, but it can still play its part, I guess. So we'll bring it in. And see what it can do. And there's the ice beam. Oh, we bare, barely take it. Barely. Okay. Well, that's kind of fine. Um, because we can just ice crash the Cinderace and we can go for Max Quake into Gastrodon because that will. Uh, we should add speed the Cinderace now with Landorus. Get the Max Quake into the Gastrodon. Bounce will come down. Either take Landorus out or just into Glastria. Uh, not doing very much damage. And then the Icicle Crash because it's flying. Should be enough to clean this one up for us. So that's a decent enough start after a bit of a shaky start where we couldn't really get our Trick Room mod going. Um, and it's always difficult against an opponent with um, a kind of a hard Trick Room mod themselves. Oh man. Okay, well... Uh, Icicle Crash Mist, Bounce Mist, so it was a bit of a dead turn there for Cinderace and Glastria, but uh, <laughs> never mind. We got one more max turn left. We can. Oh no, we haven't. We haven't. We're uh, we're done. But they are a flying type now, so we're scarfed back with our scarf again, and um, we can we can just go Icicle Crash and Rock Slide should be enough here. We'll just lock into that. And the nice thing about Landorus, obviously. If you've ever played previous format, Scarfed Landorus is always good with those rock slides just for the, the the flinch factor late game if you need it. But very good game to my opponent and a nice little one for us to kind of kick off with today. Okay, we've got our next opponent in the episode playing a team of Zapdos, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Cresselia, Mama Swine, and Celestula. So what have we got going on here? Uh, speed control, 
Icy Wind, Cresselia Trick Room potentially there. Max Airstreams on Zapdos, the um, Celesteela as well. I feel like this is a really good game for Regieleki here. Honestly, like it does such a good work against the Zapdos, the Tapu Fini, Celesteela. Um, we can do a bunch of stuff, so I think it's quite a nice Pokemon to have access to and hopefully if we can get it going we can see the damage that it'll be able to do with our choice specs we've got electro ball on it as well so for some of these slow pokemon on my opponent's team be doing absolutely crazy damage um a trick room mode isn't bad either glastria it doesn't do too bad i do worry a little bit about the tapu finny it does make me worry slightly about what it can do um we lead Finny because I think leading Finny isn't a bad idea because at least hmm, maybe a fast mod with Intimidate isn't bad. Uh, oh, we could go Dusclops. I think I really want the, the Glastria to work. I'm gonna bring Finny as well. We're not bringing Incineroar, which feels mm, maybe a little bit <laughs> risky, especially with the Celesteela there at least with with Incineroar and Regilecki you've got like two really good mods to uh to deal with and put pressure on Celesteela but when you don't bring uh one of them and you bring the other it does feel like it's a little like Celesteela feels like one of those Pokemon you really need to have the, a good good measures for um but we are seeing Zapdos and we are seeing Incineroar come out okay well I think they have to fake out Regilecki as it bounces around the field um, so we could hard switch into Glass Trial, uh, the Figgy Berry, and the Life Orb on the Zapdos. Mm. You're gonna fake out. You're gonna fake out for for sure. And I think you, uh, are you though? Are you gonna just parting shot? It makes sense, and then you can get your, your own Trick Room on on the field. So I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for the trick room while we've got the opportunity to. Now they do fake it out. Okay, they play it straight, straight down the line. And what we're gonna see, heat wave. Do we lose a lecky? We do. Oh, I didn't expect us to lose it. <laughs> okay, well, it could be worse. We get the trick room up. We're fine. We're fine. Get to see Glastria do its thing now, though. So we're all, we're all good. Now, where do we where do we target? I think we target the Incineroar with a Max Quake. We uh, get our weakness policy up and go from there. Get a special defense boost, which will help us against the Zapdos. Um, and then we can get the, the Zapdos the next turn. We'll go for that Brick Break into Glass Trio and uh, go for that one. And it should be enough to get the Incineroar. Like, Incineroar is not going to have Protect. Uh, Zapdos could. And Zapdos could definitely Max as well. Even though I think a Max uh, Hailstorm or hill, crash, whatever we're calling it, would be enough to pick the knock-up out. We're going to see Incineroar actually switch out and uh, Tepo Fini come in, which I do not mind at all, uh, because this is going to be one of those Pokemon that's very problematic for us to deal with anyway, so just getting some big damage onto it for free, technically, is, is always going to be good in these sort of matches. Now, we do have to consider that Incineroar probably will come in at some point, get its Intimidate off and put us down to plus one rather than plus two, which we're gonna be on in one moment after we proc our weakness policy. But at the same time, if we see the Zapdos protect here, I think we're in an incredible position. Yeah, okay, perfect. Perfecto. Okay, I think we've pretty much got this. Be interesting to see how much damage this does to the Tapu Fini as well. So there's a Brick Break. Brick Break also works nicely as well. If you're seeing like a bunch of the Lapras teams with the Aurora Veil uh, going around, I know we played one on our last episode, so you've got the option there to just get rid of the screen, which is super nice. Not enough to take down the Finny. Now, if it hasn't got a Berry here, we can take it down with the Sclops this next turn, which puts us in a, like a phenomenal position just to keep the ball rolling. But fortunately, we do see... Is it a Wiki? It is a Wiki. Wiki Wiki. But I mean, we're still kind of all right. Um, it's just whether or not we see the Zapdos switch out now, which I would imagine it to do. And we probably see Incineroar coming down that slot, which would make a lot of sense. Um, Cause I just don't see the Zapdos coming in, uh, the, the Zapdos staying in just to take a Max Hailstorm. Now it's whether or not we call Incineroar switch 
We're probably better off going for the Finny again, to be honest, and just going for a Nightshade into the, the Zapdos. That's a safer play, uh, rather than kind of call a predict that might not happen. Okay, we're going to see the Finny. Zapdos is going to attack here, which is interesting. We get the Incineroar switch in regardless, even though we made the safer play. This should take the, um, the Incineroar down. And obviously, if we can start picking up knockouts, that's when our Moxie kind of boost our, our new ability starts um, taking effect as well, which then mitigates these Intimidate boosts that my opponent's getting. Okay, so there's going to be one. We've still got uh, one more max turn to go, which will put us back to plus two, I believe, after the Intimidate. Um, and the Zapdos probably going to heat wave here, I'd imagine. Chilling Nay activates, which is technically just like Moxie. And there's a heat wave. And the light bulb taking a little bit more damage. But my opponent really pinned at the minute, you know. Even if they want to max something like the Zapdos or the Finny, they're going to go down uh, this next turn. And the Finny coming back in. I'm tempted to go for the Finny again. Um, because, yeah, I'm just going to go after it and just go for the Nightshade into the Zapdos here. Because the special attack boosts are going to be so useful for us. Uh, it just makes, like... Glastria just an absolute tank as well as Dusclops it means we're getting the, the longevity set of Trick Room up once again which is which is just phenomenal and this is really like the, how the team is meant to perform you know you get your Trick Room up and you just put the pressure you keep putting the pressure on with with these two Pokemon and it's very difficult for your opponent to kind of make okay protect on Finny I wasn't expecting it but you've got you can't not expect it um, but like I say, I don't mind it too much because the, the special defense boost is always going to be useful for us in these situations. Zapdos will go down to another Nightshade the next turn. And uh, we can probably just high horsepower into the Finny. Even if it maxes, we'll be able to get it with that attack. As our Trick Room has not ended yet. And we've still got a little bit of time to play around. So, another Heat Wave. Yeah, and that's definitely in Nightshade range as our max turns do finally come to an end. But I mean, we got the most out of them. We got plus three. I mean, let's have a look at these stats. Let's have a look at these stats on Glastria. Plus three special defense, <laughs> plus two special attack, and plus two attack, which is which is super nice. So yeah, well, high horsepower, the Finny, Nightshade, Zapdos, and that should deal with both of them. Unless my opponent switches round. Uh, we're going to see a double protect try and stalling out the the trick room which makes a lot of sense you know you want to try and give yourself the best opportunity possible but unfortunately not getting the double protect here as the high horsepower are going to come into the finny and uh, take it down and as the trick room does end we can just protect this next turn and um that'll put us onto plus three attack which is nuts uh, we just need to set the trick room up now and we've got this. Uh, the Zapdos is so low health as well. It's probably got two attacks left in it with life orb recoil. Uh, Mama Swine, the last one. There we are. Big boy Mamo. Big boy Mamo coming out. Uh, do we need to protect with Gastria? Yeah, they're, go they're going to um, they're going to max with they're going to max with Mama Swine. Uh, they probably double in to Disclops, but just can't see them taking it down maybe max quake maybe it's not life old mama so i know that's the thing and we're very defensively built dusclops we're like relaxed so i'll be surprised i don't think the zapdos has got enough power in it to actually take down the so i could be wrong i could be wrong they may be able to take us down but you've got to go all in on the dusclops now to stop this trick room it's like the only option i'm a swine such a cool pokemon look at this tusks it's just nuts um, Thunderbolt. Yeah, they're going all in. They're making the correct play. Oh, it's still not doing very much, though. <laughs> and Max Quake. Yeah, following up. Is this going to be enough? No. I didn't think it was going to be. Man. <laughs> Dusclops is just nuts, isn't it? I know we played it all season, but still. No, like, it's just absolutely incredible it's such a good pokemon here would be really good and it does make me consider do we need the will-o-wisp or would it be better to have pain split pain split would genuinely genuinely be better we'll just go for a close combat into the mammal it's probably sashed you know and i'll just go for a nightshade into it as well just to cover the sash if it is sashed because plus three close combat should take it down 
the Zapdos is going to detect as well. So I'd imagine, I'm hoping a plus three close combat should take it down. Yeah, no, no trouble at all. That's fine. And then the Zapdos going to be going to be easily dealt with this next turn. So pick up another nice win and the Glastria team's done pretty well I like I, this second game definitely uh, a game that I, I'm really happy with I think it's a good example of how the team can kind of start snowballing and getting momentum and really just kind of overwhelming your opponent even when they've got some like really awkward Pokemon to play around so let's go for a Will-O-Wisp into Glastria and go for the Icicle Crash into Zapdos because I feel like we could show bot because even though they're going to cancel on us anyway very good game to my opponent and uh, i hope you guys have enjoyed the games today obviously the, the team is incredible i love glastria i think it's a, a very cool pokemon and something to note as well obviously uh, i was pretty lucky when i caught my glastria in game i only had caught one i caught the first calyrex that I, I came across and it's got a two speed iv so it's pretty slow it's slow enough to take advantage of the trick room and it will be probably better against opposing glastrias if you're not in a trick room environment and, and your opponent's got like minimum zero iv minimum speed you know um so i think two iv is not bad one iv is obviously the the one that you want but uh, we haven't got that unfortunately so uh we will throw this team up and these teams will be available uh that i've thrown up this week for the next couple of weeks so after that they will be going down and making way for other teams so just be aware of that but if there are teams when they do go down and you want them still up let me know i can always put them over to my second switch and uh, you can go from there but there is the team from today got to see a little bit of everything i feel um obviously not the not much from the reggie Alecki, but uh we, it did come to a game, but it did do enough to allow us to get the, the, the Glastria in for free after our Trick Room was set up. So that's the main thing. Landorus did a bunch of stuff in game one, and uh, we probably didn't get to see much of the Tapu Fini at all. But I mean, that's, that's fine. We know what Fini does, and it's always going to be a solid Pokemon on whatever team you probably put it on. Uh, so there's a code. Hope you enjoy it. Remember, drop a like if you've enjoyed this episode and uh, consider subscribing if you uh, if you are new to the channel and you enjoy the sort of content. And make sure you hit those notification button as well so you don't miss any episodes when they do go up. And uh, I look forward to reading those comments. Keep sending those comments about what uh, what you've been playing, what you've what what you're kind of scared of facing as well i'd love to hear that in this format but we'll leave it there and i look forward to seeing all those comments very soon and i'll see you for another episode very soon so take care of yourselves till then bye bye